Hello fellow woodworkers and welcome to this week's edition of the Garage Workshop 10 Minute Tool Review where we have finally got an air compressor in the workshop. Roll the intro. <laughs> An air compressor is a tool that I've wanted to have in the garage workshop for quite a long time. Uh, even though I've got a couple of options when it comes to fixing, I've got an airstrike, a Ryobi airstrike gun, which is a sort of first stroke second fixer, and I've also got a brad nailer. I wanted to have the flexibility of having an option that was provided by compressed air, not just for that, but for cleaning things and for a range of other options. Having trawled YouTube and watched lots and lots of videos about air compressors, about how they work and recommendations, I settled on two videos in the end. The first by Rag and Bone Brown, I'll put a link in the description, where he went through a lot of the different air compressors on the market. He even created a spreadsheet, as he likes to do, and he gave his opinion of what the best uh, makes were and which option he had gone for and why. I also came across Peter Millard's uh, video, very, very similar, and also references Keith's video, where he talks about just having an entry level uh, air compressor. Now this air compressor is exactly the same as the one that's in Peter's video. And I picked it because having done a lot of reading, looked at a lot of reviews, and also a really good recommendation from somebody in the channel, it fitted all of the criteria. I wanted something that wasn't going to take up a huge amount of space. And as you can see, the footprint of, footprint of this isn't massive. I wanted something that wasn't massively noisy. And again, we'll get into it a bit more when I unbox it, but not massively noisy. And I wanted something that wasn't going to break the bank. And this certainly didn't. At retailing at £120, it's a very cost-effective entry level into the air compressor market. And for me, that's the most important thing. I haven't bought this because I want to go spraying the exterior of houses. I've bought this for an occasional air compressed use. Mostly I think it's going to be used for blowing dust away, but I want something that I can use if I'm going to put in half an hour, an hour of putting things together if I'm making cabinet drawers, something that's got the guts to do what I need it to do, but not something that's got a load of bells and whistles that I don't need. I need something that's more functional, which is why I selected the HY5508. Again, there's lots of reviews of it on the internet, and if it's something you're considering, it's well worth looking at them. So let's unbox it and see what we've got inside. Okay, so as I said in the introduction, not a massive footprint on this um, box, and being Hyundai, which is obviously a very well-known uh, brand, I am expecting good build quality. And although I've seen these in reviews and other things, it's never quite like having it yourself. So let's see how big it is. Ooh, heavy. So that is the machine unit. Free piece of wood in the bottom of the box. And I don't think we've missed any instructions. So they are all here along with the accessories. Now, one of the things um, that I was very, very keen uh, to have in terms of an air compressor was one that wasn't um wow well, that is a very thick cable tie uh, was one that wasn't going to be massively massively loud uh, and i know that this one um is well under the uh, 70 decibels which is generally considered to be a sort of safe level of uh, noise for humans to hear it's a very very small unit it's very much an all-in-one um, it says it doesn't need any oil it says here that it's already all configured all ready to go out of the box you literally need to plug it in and away you go so we're going to be testing that in a minute but in terms of build quality um, pretty much what you would expect um, from an entry level device it actually looks really nicely made um, it doesn't look too cheap. This is something that Peter pointed out in um, his video as well, and that is the uh, cable, which I think is supposed to be uh, three feet, but that is a very, very short cable. It comes with um, some instructions. Let's have a look. 
do like a good set of instructions and uh, a thank you you have planted one tree so by placing an order for this high and die product they have placed they have planted uh, a tree very um, bog standard um, instructions nothing major uh, in there but interestingly um, the instructions are all they're only in one language so they are English instructions and it tells you exactly how you prepare how you set it up and how you use it so let's start now and see what it's like okay so there are three things that come uh, in the box the first one is um, a connector uh, this year this uh, air compressor uses a euro style um, connector there is a sort of hard rubber pipe with a point on it I'm not 100% sure what that's for yet and this which is the air filter now unfortunately um, I'll show you I'll give you a close-up of it the air filter uh, is quite badly damaged um, to the point where it's got a massive uh, dent taken out of it across the top and um, the sort of the guides that it slides around have all uh, buckled and uh, bent so uh, really real a real shame because um, the air filter is obviously integral uh, to the machine and it's pretty uh, badly damaged uh, as I said I'll show you a close-up of how it looks so um, not great because with something like this you wouldn't really want to use it with um, you know w with a part of it an essential part of it that's uh, dented having looked on the machine uh, there doesn't appear to be any damage um, anywhere on the machine so I'm not sure if it's a case of the air filter has just been um, crushed against it or I don't know but um, definitely definitely uh, not going to use that so I actually bought this from um, B&Q so what I plan on doing is uh, taking it back and seeing what they uh, suggest whether they can just send out an air filter or whether they'll take the entire thing uh, back and give me another one so let me have a chat to B&Q which is where I bought it and take it from there okay so fellow woodworkers um i've got a new compressor um and i fell down a little bit of a b&q uh, rabbit hole which i'll tell you very quickly but it's arrived today it's actually taken seven days to get here from the last piece of footage that you will have just seen where i said i was going to contact b&q so i bought it in b&q for two reasons number one um it was a relatively good price it was in line with amazon and all of the other products uh, places around sorry and number two I had a B&Q voucher uh, which I was bought as a present and I had a love to shop voucher which you can also use at B&Q so those two vouchers together basically took most of the cost of this well half of the cost of it which is why I chose to buy it in B&Q so when it broke or when I um, looked at the air filter I spent an hour and three minutes waiting on hold to speak to B&Q's customer services to be told that they don't send out those parts even though that filter I can buy on the internet for $7.99 with free postage and packaging I looked they wouldn't refund me the money to enable me to go and buy it and because it's what they call a marketplace um, product it comes directly from the wholesaler not from a B&Q store as a result the only option open to me was to take it back to a B&Q and get my money back I took it back to my local B&Q in Manchester and they refunded me but they refunded me the money that I paid uh, on my card went back to my card but the rest of the money went on a credit note now it didn't go back onto a gift card or a voucher it went onto a credit note you can only use credit notes in store you can't use them online and you can't use them anywhere else you have to physically go into a store hand over the credit note and buy them which I queried I spoke to the store manager and he said well there's no way we can do it but then I pointed out to him that some of the money he had given me in a credit note actually came from a love to shop voucher not from a b&q voucher and he said well there's nothing we can do about that our systems won't allow it he said if you had the original love to shop card we could probably try and run it through the till 
and see if we can put the money back on it but my love to shop voucher wasn't a physical card it was an online one so effectively B&Q ended up taking some of my money that I could have spent somewhere else through love to shop and adding it to the credit note so I wasn't very happy but of course I then came up with a plan that could I reorder in the st in the shop use the credit note they've given me and paying the rest in cash but apparently there's no facility to do that in B&Q but the guy who served me having had me moan it in for half an hour eventually found a way around it which I'm sure he shouldn't have done so it has taken it took four days for the order to process and three days for the delivery so if you are going to buy something in a bricks and mortar shop although i bought it online you've got to be careful with the return policy not something i ever think about but in this instance it's taken a whole week to replace something now i'm going to pop it open again and fingers crossed we don't have a damaged air filter in this one deja vu fellow woodworkers let's see what's in this packet And the other thing about the other one that I returned, and I did check it off camera, there wasn't any damage anywhere on the box. So I'm suspecting that that filter got damaged prior to it even being put in the box. So the first thing I'm gonna do this time is check the air filter is okay before I open it or do anything else, because if it's not, then I'm gonna have to make another trip to B&Q. don't believe it <laughs> it is again misshapen I'm just wondering you know if this is really poor uh, manufacturing it's again um, completely misshapen um, not as bad as the other one to be fair and it looks like it could be opened but this whole side here is all buckled and if you look at it hopefully you can see that it's not a square, it's not a circle, and the bolt on the bottom is completely at an angle. I just, I don't understand how it's difficult to make that part without damaging it. Um, I mean, it's in better condition than the last one, to be fair, so I, I do think I'm going to um, give it a go and uh, see if it works, because I can't go through another week of waiting but it is pretty buckled and pretty bent that i'm just really surprised i mean if that is such an important part and if it's going to get damaged as easily as that then surely they should consider putting it in better packaging it's just lying there against the compressor let's get the compressor out anyway as i mentioned on the previous unpacking um it's quite a heavy unit i think it says uh, the official weight of it is 16 um, kilograms, and I, I would agree with that. Um, it is quite heavy, to be fair. And they tied the plastic bag up a lot better than the last one. Whoops. That's from opening the packet. Okay, so in terms of the actual uh, compressor, there doesn't appear to be any damage at all, which is great news. Um, obviously, this is a direct replacement for the other one, so you've still got the ridiculously small uh, power lead, but it looks okay, uh, to be fair. So, I'll give you a close-up look now, and then we'll hook it up. Just to prove I'm not exaggerating how bent that air filter is. Now, I probably shouldn't have done that, but I have straightened it. So, um, would work a bit. I have just gone to plug the compressor in uh, to a little bit of a field test for you, and in what can only be described as a horror scenario or a complete conspiracy I've just discovered that the plug as you can see I will give you a close-up 
is completely smashed. Now I didn't check it when I unpacked it, but if you take the protection off, you can see it's completely, the pins on the plug are completely destroyed. Now, I've only really got one choice. Of course I could rewire the plug myself, but if I do that, it will be invalidating the warranty. And if anything goes wrong with it, I won't be able to take it back. So believe it or not, I've got to make a second trip to B&Q to return the compressor for a second time. Bearing in mind, I already had a week delay from the first one to this one. So quite frankly, I'm astounded at that. I mean, just genuinely bad luck, but I also feel this 10 minute tour review is gonna take probably a month to film by the end. So plan of action now is to go back to B&Q, return it yet again, go through the complete and utter disaster of the credit note scenario that I've had before and order a new one. So fellow woodworkers, believe it or not, it has been five weeks since I filmed that piece of footage that you just saw when I first received uh, the air compressor from B&Q. And I can only say that the customer experience I've had has been shocking. Now, I'm not wholly blaming B&Q uh, for that because they don't deliver this product. It's not a product that they stock uh, in their warehouses. It's not a product that you can walk into a B&Q store and buy. It's a product that you have to order on a sort of click and collect or home delivery basis. Now, you can buy these high end day h15508 anywhere they can you can buy them in amazon you can get them in any number of tool uh, websites the reason obviously that i went for b&q as i mentioned is because i had a gift uh, voucher to use up and a lot of shop so it took the price down for me but what i didn't expect was the level of custom service from b&q once the problem had been reported it's not like b&q could just literally say oh yeah we'll send another one out because they're not stopped by them uh, they're stopped by another company, which I think is called Genpower, um, which is a bigger uh, company, a third party, and they apparently come directly from the manufacturer. I think where I've been particularly disappointed is the amount of phone calls, emails that I've had to send to even get to this point, um, and the rep repetition of that. Everyone I've spoken to, I've had to go through the entire story again. I've actually sent the photos of the damage to the other compressor three times now. Um, again, all in the same department, which is incredibly frustrating. And I think the other thing is there doesn't seem to be any sort of, oh, well, sorry, you've had a bad experience, even though I've told them, uh, and trust me, they're well aware. There doesn't seem to be any sort of concern about the poor customer service from b and Q side. Eventually, I got to speak to somebody who uh, internally rang um, a complaints department within uh, B&Q and that's how I eventually got it shifted and when I was talking to that person I just said you know this is an absolute shocking experience and his reply to me was well we're very busy with customer returns and we don't have a huge amount of staff well to me that's not a really good enough um, excuse but I understand it is what it is we are where we are but you would not believe I have not opened this box. This is how it was delivered by uh, DPD. So not only have I had to send back or had two damaged compressors, the final compressor, the one I'm praying isn't damaged, has come in pretty much an open box. Now this could be a case of just having the sellotape undone but if I didn't know better I would say that this is a returned item or an item that's come out that's not been resealed because when you look at the sellotape it's not even sellotaped across the main edge there's just just two bits of sellotape going either side and I wish I'd kept the serial number because I've got a horrible feeling this is the first one that I've returned and they've just rebadged it and sent it to me with a new air filter in it because that was the problem with the first one so let's open it up and let's keep our fingers crossed that everything is there and it's undamaged Well, so far so good. Doesn't look to be 
any, or I say that, the polystyrene on one side is completely destroyed. I think I'm gonna tip it up this time to open it. Oops, that was perhaps not the best way. So we appear to have no idea uh, what that is, but whatever it is, it's damaged and it's not attached. So I have absolutely no idea what that is. It says, ensure the air compressor air filter is fitted before first use. Do not adjust the maximum pressure above the factory setting of 7 bar. Do not stop the compression by switch off the mains. Do not remove any fittings from the tank which is pressurised. So this, I presume, is supposed to fit on it. But as you can see, that's completely dented. And I'm presuming that's the air filter. Unbelievable. So I presume the air filter goes in there and then that must go in there like that. Oh, it's absolutely ridiculous. Ridiculous. This is the third unit that I've had from them, and all three of them have been damaged. It's just insane. And obviously that's not... That doesn't appear to be damaged um, from shipping. For that to have come loose where it was, there would be damage in the outside of the box, and there isn't any, but that's completely dented and the actual wire I'll take that off again the actual wire look the cabled wire is exposed and I what I don't understand is why is this a different this appears to be a completely different air filter system um, to the other one because the other one had that screw in air filter on the top and this one hasn't. That's just odd to me. Right, let's unpack it and give it a test. Okay, so having done a little bit of um, research on the internet, I do have to correct what I just said in that last clip. This apparently was on all of my other air compressors. I just never uh, noticed it, to be honest. And obviously it is, it is dented and it's smashed um, quite heavily, but it was on the other ones. I just didn't notice because obviously on the other ones it hadn't hung, wasn't coming off. I have got the air filter and I am pleased to report I've got a completely unmolested and undamaged air filter. Uh, so that's one good sign at least. Um, I've done a check over of the rest of the compressor and there's no other damage um, except for that. But I have given the box a check and there are no compression points in that box at all. That can only have happened at part of the packaging or I don't know because had that happened there would have, because it's quite a long way from the edge of the box, there would have been a bit of a chunky impact. The box is perfect unless it's been damaged prior and they put it in another one. But anyway... Um, it appears to be okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the air filter in and then we'll crank it up and see how loud it is, which is what I was going to do four, five weeks ago now. Let's get this 10 minute tour review finished. Okay, so uh, the specification um, for this is quite interesting actually because I've just looked on Hyundai's website and I've also looked at Amazon and they have got a difference in the decibel um, level. According to Amazon, uh, the maximum noise or the running noise of this unit is 
60 decibels, whereas according to High and Dine, I think Peter Millard's video, but don't quote me on that, I think it said it was 70. Um, but either way, you know, that's still um, well below or below what it should be. Certainly if it's 60, that's below because they say 70 is roughly what's comfortable for humans. So I've got an extension lead. I'm going to switch it on and we'll plug it in, see um, how loud it is. And I'll do a little talk over so you can hear and then we'll test how what the decibels are of it. So let's turn it on. And I have to be honest, I'm not sure how it sounds uh, to you, but to me, that is um, really quite quiet. I was expecting it to be a lot louder uh, than that. And obviously, you'll know from compressors, basically, this is just filling the tank up uh, at the bottom. And it should eventually, when it reaches its bar pressure, it should cut out until it's used again. But yeah, I'm impressed with that. I, I, to be honest, I thought that was going to be a lot louder uh, than it is. But what I will do now is uh, get my meter out and I'll just test the decibels and see how loud it actually is. So I'll start it and we'll start the compressor. Okay, so as you heard there, the compressor has reached its capacity, the tank is full, and actually the decibels range from about 72 to 80, but then settled uh, around 74, so more, certainly more than on Amazon, uh, but not a huge amount, and for me, it's not going to be on all the time, like a constant uh, background noise, so for me, it, it plenty, plenty loud enough, plenty quiet enough, so now I'm going to attach um, a gun. I've got a staple gun, uh, sort of a brad nailer um, that goes on it. So let's attach it and actually try it out, see what it's like. Okay, so the Hyundai uh, uses the uh, European um, style fixings. Um, I don't know a lot about it, to be honest. I'm not a, um, a connoisseur on it, but I think there's two types. I think BTS is one and the Euro style is other. Now, in the, out of the box, in the pack you don't get anything that will get you up and running you don't get a tube you don't get any of that what you do get is an adapter which uh, looks like this which is the euro style here and obviously that is to go uh, into a hose that's all you get really uh, and that fits in there so what I did was I just bought the cheapest um, hose that I could on Amazon that's got a male Euro style and a female Euro, st Euro style adapter on either end. I'll give you a close up of these because obviously this end will go in there and this end is the one that you use to connect the different tools. Now I bought a gun and again all of these products I'll put links in the description. I just bought a really cheap uh, entry level um, sort of dust gun um, just for blowing dust out. I think that was something like £10, I can't remember, but I'll put the link in. And I bought this, which is the uh, silver line. It says Air Brad Nailer, but from what I've read online, and this is the same one that Peter had in his video, um, for me, I think this is literally just a Brad Nailer. Now, I've already opened uh, the box, because obviously this isn't a silver line uh, gun. Uh, review and it's just a very bog standard uh, gun and if you're interested I'll put a link to Peter's video he talks a little bit more about these uh, guns in his video but it comes as you can see it comes uh, ready to receive either of uh, the different threads so I did have to buy um, it has got a, uh, an adapter in it but it's not the Euro style one, it doesn't come with that. So I actually did have to buy uh, some separate connectors and I'll put a link to those in as well. They weren't very expensive at all. Um, so we'll put it up, we'll hook it up now and we'll just see how it goes just with blowing out um, through the dust nozzle and then we'll give the gun a run for its money.
uh, that's more to protect my ears from the sound of the gun rather than the um, sound of the compressor. So let's ha see how the 50 mil um, nails, bread nails, get on. I've got a piece of uh, sort of worktop uh, there and a piece of um, just plywood. And let's just see if it will connect those two together. Plug it in. Okay, so we should be good to go. Okay, so that all, I'm just going to turn the compressor off, uh, that all seems to work very well. Let's switch from the 40 to the 25. And let's give those a go. Uh, as you can uh, hopefully see, that's the first uh, one that I drove in. For some reason, that didn't go in. Uh, you can see the other three. They haven't actually come through, but they've sort of just raised the surface. And these are the other ones that I put in. And obviously, that's the piece of wood that I put on. So it joined uh, very well. And also, uh, importantly... Um, and I will check the footage in case I've got it wrong, but I didn't hear the compressor uh, refill when I was uh, doing that. So not very uh, heavy on the compressor. So I've had a chance to test it now. I've tested the blur, as you saw. Very impressed with that. That's going to get a lot of use. And I've uh, tested the Brad Nailer. So I'm going to do my conclusion and let you know what I think of the high end die compressor. OK, so what are my overall impressions of the Hyundai H15508 compressor. Well, normally on a 10 minute tool review, I give you my lowdown on what I think um, the tool is like, and I also put a recommendation of whether or not you, you should consider buying it. This time, I'm not gonna do that only because I have no knowledge or experience of compressors except for this one. This is the first one I've ever used, it's the first time I've ever used one, and I think it would be unfair to give it um, a sort of rating in comparison to others, because as you'll have seen, my knowledge is very limited anyway. So what I'm gonna do is reflect on this in terms of how well it's achieved my aims when I bought it. So when I set out to buy this, I wanted to have two really, really key things. I wanted a unit that was fairly small um, and un inexpensive. I wasn't after a massive, great big chunky one or one that's gonna go, got to go on wheels because the amount of use it's gonna get in the garage workshop does not justify the cons cost, the expense, the space. It doesn't justify any of that. What I wanted was a unit that would be cost effective, would have the correct amount of power for what I needed it to do and do the jobs that I wanted. Now, I've only tested uh, the, Brad Gar the Brad Nailer and I've tested obviously the air blower and on both of those, it's definitely achieved my goals. Uh, the gun is really powerful with the um, feed from the compressor. That's really, really positive. And the air that came out of the end of the a uh, blower, I presume, I presume that's called, uh, again, was exactly what I wanted. In fact, it's probably more powerful than I thought it was going to be. So achieving that aim um, was really important. Now, the second reason that I got this was I wanted to be able to have the flexibility in future to do other things. This is going to revolutionise my uh, work around joining things and nailing things. And as you've seen in my videos, I have a very on-off love affair uh, with Brad Nailers. My um, original, the first one I had, my Ryobi Airstrike, doesn't really work effectively. Um, I've got a Balka, uh one that you'll have seen in my recent videos, uh, which is really good, but it's just not gutsy enough. It's a plug-in uh, electric one. It's just not gutsy enough. This one I know is going to do the job. And from the little bit of wood that I just joined together, I think this is going to be a game changer for me in terms of the garage workshop. So from what I set out to achieve, I've achieved both of those those goals quite 
considerably. So I'm very happy with the purchase. If you're like me, you know you're not gonna use it all the time or it's not gonna get a huge amount of use or if you've got a small setup like I have, I would recommend it. If you're after something probably a bit more gutsy or it's gonna do a lot more, then it may not be for you. But I also agree with what Peter said, you know, as an entry level model for the money, I don't think you can really go wrong. The other thing is you don't have to spend ages setting it up. It all comes from the factory with all the bits and bobs that you need. So really you're sort of ready to go. It's very, very plug and play, which is also really good, especially if you don't really have any knowledge. The only complicated bit or the trick I had really was just around uh, the connectors because obviously this didn't come with a hose or anything which I don't I don't know if I expected that or not but not really plug and play out of the box you need to do a little bit of homework in advance and, and buy some uh, adapters and different things but once you've got that you're away and all of the sort of peripherals that I bought not really very much money at all so overall for me a really really good buy and I think you're going to see this feature in a lot of garage workshop videos coming up so fellow woodworkers we have come to the end of what has felt like the longest 10 minute tool review in history this is probably going to be a 24 minute tool review as opposed to a 10 minute tool review but sometimes that's just the way things uh, go and as I mentioned in my um, August blog the experience I've had with B&Q has completely contrasted with the experience that I've had from uh, Evolution but we got there in the end. If this is your first time at the Garage Workshop, thank you so much for watching. Please can I ask you to subscribe and comment. It's really important to the channel and it's important to the algorithm that you click the like and you write a comment. If you're a regular viewer, thank you so much. You know how much I enjoy the feedback. Please can I also ask you to like and comment. Uh, and that's it for this week's edition of the Garage Workshop. I've got a, another interesting uh, review video coming up in the next few weeks. It's quite exciting for the channel. I've actually been sent something by a manufacturer uh, to have a look at. So keep your eye out for that video. Hope you have a fantastic week, fellow woodworkers. Take care.